Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is learning how to follow the stitch multiples in order to get an answer. You love the project but you wanna change the size. So this is a project that I do wanna film but I don't wanna film the entire project across because it's a waste of my time for demonstration purposes. So what I technically do behind the scenes is that I look at this pattern and figure out how to condense it so that I can just show you a mini swatch. So the other day I was filming another ripple afghan where I was able to do a small swatch and that's because I was able to figure out what the stitch multiple is. So for this particular concept what you do need is a calculator in, the, in case my phone. You'll need a rubber in case or eraser if you wanna be more technically correct and a pencil and I recommend using graph paper. So I've not actually figured out what this is yet because I figured this is a great exercise and what I want to do is follow this instruction and figure out how the multiples are gonna work. So we know that it's chaining of 98 but it doesn't tell you if you wanna change the size what each one of those chevrons would be. So that's what we're gonna figure out today. So ultimately my goal is to be able to chart it out so that I can follow it myself. So I never posted this particular chart. I never even showed it on camera when I did the video but this is how I figured it out. So I had my stitch multiples of 19 plus 23 and that's what this was here. So I figured it out behind the scenes so that I could actually teach it so I could do a small swatch just in case. So our goal is to make something like this. So let's talk about the uh, symbols because that's something that you're really gonna come in handy to and I'm also just gonna be very blunt with you in just a moment. So if you don't want realness then turn me off right now. So laying it on the line, the most questions that we get asked are is that I wanna change the size, what are the multiples? I find that most people don't know how to use these diagrams but other people also now know how to use them but they prefer somebody else to do the work. So this is one of those things that when people ask me what the multiple is, what they're asking me to do is to chart it out like this and get them the information. So my goal today is to show you how this is done because if you know how to read these symbols you can do it yourself. And so the whole idea for me is to teach a person to give or give a, a person a fish they can eat for a dinner but if you teach them to fish they can do it for a lifetime. So my point being is that I'm showing you how this is done so that you can not have to wait for me or anybody else to help you because you can figure it out. So let's talk about where you can get the diagrams and I'm going to show you um, where that is in just a moment. So this is a free resource available with the Yarn Craft Council of the United States or of America and what this is is that these are just the basic symbols. Now you can find these symbols in books that use crochet diagrams and you can see what those abbreviations are. So what we have to do first and because I'm very familiar with using these I know what those symbols are but sometimes you don't. So you can just uh, put it into Google uh, what the name of the stitch is and just put the name uh, symbol with it. So if you didn't know what a half double crochet looked like you could do half double crochet symbol on Google and it will probably show you um, what that is. So you wanna use these as a reference tool and I'll provide a link in the more information of this video to access this uh, particular chart and it really comes in handy. So these are the very very basics but there's literally I believe hundreds of these particular symbols that are used in crochet. So back to the pattern we go. We have chain 98. That's not gonna tell us anything. That just tells you how many chains you're going to do because the designer has already done the work to figure out what this is going to be. So what we need to do is that we need to figure out what she did in order to get the stitch multiples to work. And so we know that chaining 98 is not gonna tell us anything. So we have to move to the next row and sometimes it can be row two, three, or four before you can actually start seeing a stitch repeat. So when you see those it'd be like row one, uh, one single crochet, second chain from the hook and one single crochet all the way across. That's not gonna tell you squat. So you have to be able to look at the first row when something magical appears that you have a repeat and that's the one that you're going to start with. So here row number one we are going to start here because there's something special going on here because it shows us that we need to repeat the asterisk to the asterisk a certain amount of times and we'll be getting into that. So because there's a repeat information there that's the place to start. So we wanna look to row number one as our solution to figure this out. So in this I know that I need to start with the down motion of that and how did I know that? So it says work two single crochets in the second chain from the hook, single crochet in the next seven, skip the next chain. This skip right here tells me that that's gonna be a bottom valley because you're skipping. Because it says single crochet in the next, three single crochets in the next chain which tells me that the three single crochets are in the peak. 
So when I go to start this I wanna start in the down motion so going down on an angle. So I'm going to draw this so it says um, work two single crochet second chain from the hook. So what you wanna do is that you just wanna start drawing what this is. So it says two single crochet second chain from the hook. So it's gonna share the same stitch and then it's said to do uh, one single crochet in the next seven. So just going in a down motion just do your single crochets which is a plus symbol. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. And then it said to skip one stitch. Okay I'm gonna put the chain there because I know I'm just gonna skip that and it says seven going up. So we have seven going up. So one and it doesn't say going up but because you've skipped I know that I'm going up. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. So I have seven going down so you count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and seven going up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It then said you have to do three single crochets in the same stitch. So one, two and three. Then I want to repeat that again because I'm not gonna be able to figure out what the repeat is yet. So I have to do seven going down. So just one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. Skip one. So I'm gonna put the chain there. That's the one I'm skipping and seven up. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. And then there's three into the next. Now usually the sides equal each other. So if I was coming down and up so this is one chevron. So when I'm working my way across this thing it should be equal. It's not always the case but most times it is. So we're gonna go seven down again. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. Skip one so I'm gonna put the chain and then we're gonna come up on the other side. So we're gonna go seven up. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. And then it's stated in the instructions that there was two single crochets in the last one. So there's gonna be two single crochets in the last. This is when I'm going to draw the chain. So I'm just gonna draw the chains underneath. They're just oval shapes. I sometimes mostly do circles. And I'm drawing those shapes under each of the single crochets. So this is the actual chain that we're doing right now. So if I drew it first, the chain, I wouldn't know the angle to put them on and I wouldn't know exactly how many multiples belong to each other. So this is kind of indicating to me how it's done. And now I gotta watch this last one. It said work two single crochets second chain from the hook. So I'm gonna go second chain from the hook. That means that there has to be a chain that's on its own and the two go in the second chain from the hook right here. Now we have to figure out what the multiples are and we're able to figure it out now. So now that we've drawn it out I want to draw a line that will represent the same area of, of a section. So I'm going to draw after the first two single crochets here. They're sharing the same one. I'm gonna draw a line down. So it's going to be in between and I'm gonna look for the next time that that appears and it's going to be after here. So the two single crochets here in the same stitch is representing the three and it's coming down. So I'm going to go there. So I know that between all these ten or all these uh, single crochets are going to be my count. So I'm gonna count each one of the chains that exist between them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen and sixteen. So there's sixteen. So now I'm gonna draw the next line down to test that. So it's just after. See it's the same after. So let's see if there's sixteen. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. So we know sixteen is part of the multiple now. So we, one, two. So what I want to do on this one here is that I want to count how many stitches are left over. 
So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. But look this chain is left over and we also have the beginning chain that I didn't count here. So that I know that this one here is going to be 16 plus this chain that's left over and the original. So I'm guessing that this is multiples of 16 plus 2. So what we're going to do is that we're going to take our calculator and we're going to test this theory. So again I haven't done this in person yet so we'll test it. So the designer said that it's multiples of or the, the chain is 98. So what I want to do is 98 divided by 16. Okay and that will give me 6.125. So I'm just going to take the whole number the 6. So I'm going to go 6 times 16 which gives me 96. Okay so I'm going to write that 96. And then we're going to take the original of the 98. 98 minus 96. I didn't have to do that in the calculator but it's 2. So there's 2 left over. So we know that the 16, so 16 there times 6 gives you 96 and then the 2 extra chains that were left over takes you to 98. Therefore this is confirmed at being multiples of 16 plus 2. So if I ever want to change the size of this then I know what that is. But what this does not figure out for you is that it will not figure out how much more yarn you're going to need. That's something that I've not been able to figure out in my lifetime. So this is just one of those ideas where you could take this baby project now and work it out. Now how do you figure out how much distance that this is? You actually physically have to do it on the work. So let's quickly talk about that. So to figure out what those particular chevrons are going to be. So for example say you wanted to actually do a project like this here and you have to literally follow the same hook size but make sure that you follow the um, yarn that's used as well. And what you'll do is you'll take a measurement then of the distance between the chevrons. Right. So in this case it's approximately about 4, just a 4.25. Of, uh, of distance. So we know that if we were to do this kind of idea each chevron would equal that. So if you really wanted to do um, like a queen size or a twin size you have to take the amount of inches that those blankets are and divide it by this number and you will figure out how many chevrons that you need to put in here. So this is kind of a neat idea. So go going back to the other project that we're working on we know that each one of the chevrons is 16 chains. So what we have here is that if you wanted to hit a certain size you would literally have to crochet the sample and just do a mini swatch just like this big. Take your measurement and then just uh, measure down and see how far you want to make it. Now some people ask me to do that for them but the truth is is that this is something that you can do for yourself and most times I will not uh, provide that information because most times like now that I'll be doing with this, this particular project is that I will be substituting the yarn because the yarn is no longer being made. So this one of those ideas that if you choose a yarn you choose your hook size you can still do this kind of idea but you need to match the hook to the yarn in order to match to the size. So hopefully this makes some sense. Um, I'm really not sure if people get it or not but I will try it anyway and see how you make out. So until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com learning how to figure out multiples when doing the waves.